Hey everyone, Dave at Tombstone Tech, and in this video I again want to talk about your friend and mine, the simple but magnificent LED. Now I had made a video called All About LEDs, and the information in that video is accurate, but I got some feedback afterwards that made me realize that there were some things that I left out of that video, so I want to try and cover those things in this video. Uh, if you haven't watched All About LEDs, you might want to go back and watch that because I'm going to build on, on the information that is in that video. So go ahead and watch that and then come back. I'll wait. Good. Now we can continue. A little recap. In that first video, I talked about how LEDs are so incredibly useful for haunters and for cosplayers because they're very small, they throw a lot of light, or at least they can throw a lot of light. We're going to cover some stuff about LED brightness in this video. Uh, they don't get hot, they run on very little electricity, and they're incredibly durable. Um, the other things I covered in that video is how to wire up LEDs yourself because they do require a little bit of special wiring and I also covered the fact that you can buy pre-wired LEDs and using either one is fine as long as you use the proper power supply for how your LEDs are wired. Another thing that I got feedback on was uh, some people had built the adjustable LED spotlight and they were disappointed with how bright the light was or rather how bright the light wasn't and I think that's probably because I, I think I did mention that I was using high brightness LEDs to make these but maybe I didn't emphasize that enough. So let's talk a little bit about LED brightness. LEDs come in a variety of colors and they come in different configurations and shapes for different purposes. Uh, but in this video, I'm just talking about the standard five, mi five millimeter LED, which you see right here. Hold it so it's in front of my black shirt and you can actually see it. Uh, these LEDs are five millimeters in diameter and these are the ones that I am talking about. So along with the different voltages and uh, amperage requirements of LEDs, the other, things that they, the other thing that they are rated on is brightness and the brightness of an LED is measured in units called millicandela, which is abbreviated as MCD, Michael Charlie Delta. The higher the millicandela, the brighter the LED. A standard LED that you would find on a electronic device as the power on indicator or something like that is usually around 50 to 100, maybe 200 microcandela MCD. They're just bright enough to catch your attention and let you know that the device is on, but they're not unpleasant to look directly at, and they are meant to be looked at directly. A high brightness LED like this one might be rated upwards of 15 thousand micro or millicandela or MCD. This one I think is actually closer to 20,000 and as you can see it's it's very bright. Um, and this is the type of LED that I used in the LED spotlight, not the standard brightness LED, the ultra bright or high brightness LED. So if the LED in your project is meant to be looked at directly, like you're putting LEDs into a doll's head to make the eyes light up or in a skull or something where people are going to be looking at the LEDs in the skull and saying, ooh, the eyes light up, uh, that's fine to use a standard LED. But if you're going to use an LED to illuminate something else like this, you want to use a high brightness LED probably something at least 10,000 uh, MCD. Uh, and as I've said, you can find ones that go as high as 15 to 20,000 MCD. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the human eye perceives different colors as being different brightnesses. For example, red and blue LEDs will look brighter than yellow and green LEDs with the same MCD rating and that's because of how your eye perceives color. So you may have to do a little trial and error to get the effect that you want, but the first thing that you want to look at, and it usually comes with the LED on a little data sheet like in this assortment right here, the first thing you want to look at is the MCD rating or millicandela. 
Something else I got asked about after those uh, videos came out was about connecting more than one LED to a power supply. And in that video, I did something just like this where I connected one LED to a power supply because I wanted to illustrate the important, well, first of all, I was talking about calculating resistor values and all of that. And I put a lot of emphasis on you have to get the polarity, the negative and positive correctly. And that is still important. But what I didn't talk about was connecting more than one LED to a single power supply. The good news is, yes, of course you can connect more than one LED to a power supply, and the better news is that LEDs require so little power that you can connect several LEDs to a single power supply. The catch is that it's, there are limitations to how many LEDs you can connect to a single power supply. Just about any power supply that you use, like this one, is going to have a label or some printing or writing on it somewhere that gives you important information about the power supply. The key information is whether the power supply, once it's plugged into the wall, gives you AC or DC power. Most of them will give you DC, but not all of them. You have to check. And the other things that it will tell you is how many volts of power it'll provide, and it'll give you an amperage rating, usually also listed in milliamps. Remember that a milliamp is a thousandth of a amp. So if you see something that says it's one amp, that would mean it's a thousand milliamps. In the All About LEDs video, I talked about how you take the amperage requirement of the LED expressed in milliamps and you plug that into Ohm's law to calculate the value of the resistor that you need to put in there. But even with a pre-wired LED, you need to know how many amps or milliamps the LED requires so that you can look at how many milliamps the power supply will provide and not overload it. So the total number of milliamps of all the LEDs that you want to hook up to a single supply, that number has to be less than the number of milliamps that the power supply can provide. For example, this particular LED uh, runs on 20 milliamps. It needs 20 milliamps to work and this particular power supply supplies 500 milliamps. Well that means that if I wanted to connect five of these LEDs to this power supply no problem because the five 20 milliamp LEDs would add up to 100 milliamps. The power supply can supply 500 milliamps, so that's well within the limits of this power supply. In theory, you could connect 25 of these 20 amp LEDs to the one power supply because the 25 LEDs would total 500 milliamps, which is exactly what this is rated for. But don't do that. Leave yourself some wiggle room. Don't go right up to the limit of what the power supply can provide. The main reason is that these wall wart type power supplies, uh, the information that's on this label is notoriously variable. It can be, it can provide a little more voltage or a little less voltage. Uh, it can provide, you know, 500 milliamps, but it might blow out and overload it at you know, 475 or something like that. So when you're going to be hooking things up to power supplies, never go all the way up to the limit of what the power supply can do. Leave yourself, say, 10% wiggle room. So if, uh, if the math says that you could connect 25 LEDs to a power supply, Give yourself 10%, maybe only connect, say, 22 LEDs to it, and that way you know that you're well within the limits. You don't want to overload a power supply and have a fire. I've said it before, I've had a fire at a haunt, and it is not a good experience, so be safe with electricity. Don't overload your power supply. Okay, so how do you physically connect more than one LED to a power supply? Well, I showed you in that one video that I'm going to plug the power supply in. You make sure that you've got the negative and the positive in the right place. You know, maybe test it before you twist the wires together. There we go. See, it's light. 
it's lighting up. I don't know if you can see that, but take my word for it, it is. So I'm just gonna connect this on there. Okay, and there you can see the spotlight is now hooked up. But if I want to add another one, what do I do? Well, what you do is you just connect this one the exact same way that you connected the other one. Positive to positive and negative to negative for however many LEDs you want to connect to one power supply up to the limit. There you can see they're both lit up. You want to do that up to the limit. So like I said, these LEDs are 20 milliamps. The power supply is 500 milliamps. I wouldn't connect more than 22 to stay within the, um, the limits of the power supply. Now, when you connect two things to the same power supply, and they each have an independent connection to the negative and positive outputs of the power supply, you have created something that is called a parallel circuit. Why it's called a parallel circuit becomes obvious if you look at it on a schematic, but just trust me, that's what it's called. There's also something called a series circuit, which involves kind of daisy chaining your LEDs together. I don't even want to go into that because uh, there are just so many disadvantages with a, uh, a uh, series circuit. Uh, the biggest disadvantage is this. Have you ever had a string of Christmas lights where one bulb goes out and so the entire string goes dark and then you spend two hours looking for the one bulb that's burnt out and you never figure it out so you end up just throwing that string away and you go out and you buy another string? That is a series circuit and that is the big drawback. If anything connected to a series circuit fails, everything shuts off. So stick with a parallel circuit like this and you'll be fine. So I have a cheap creep for you that I think that you'll find useful and it also kind of nicely uh, illustrates how a parallel circuit works. What you will need is however many you know LED spotlights or whatever that you want to hook up to your power supply making sure that the number does not exceed the capability of the power supply. You'll need the power supply of course and then you're going to need some of these. These are, you can get these in most big box uh, home improvement stores and uh, you can also get them online and frankly online they're a little cheaper. But these are connectors for uh, landscape lighting. The two pieces fit together and they go click and they, uh, they latch onto a cable to provide power to something. You can see where this is going. You're going to need those and you're going to need a length of two conductor cable. Now a two conductor cable is simply two wires that are stuck together and with any two conductor cable most times you're going to find that one of the wires will have a stripe or ridges or some printing on it so that you can always tell which wire is which any point along the cable. Now this is just speaker wire that I'm using. Uh, they do make cable specifically for landscape lighting, but you could use speaker wire or you could use any two conductor wire uh, as long as it's so 14, 16 gauge, something like that. You wouldn't want to go smaller than uh, 16. I think this is 16. So what you're going to do is you're going to connect your length of cable to your power supply and you want to keep a uh, note of which side or which polarity of the power supply is uh, connected to the marked cable. Now, and what I mean by that is I am connecting the striped uh, wire to the positive of the cable. All right, so now I have my cable. Now this is just a short run of cable. You could do it with a much longer run. Uh, and then this is the cable that would go past whatever area that you want to light up with your LED spotlights. Then you take your uh, connectors and your LED spotlights and you connect the connectors to the LED spotlights. And of course you want to make sure that you know which side of the, uh, the connector 
is uh, positive and which side is negative connected to the LED. Uh, it's probably a good idea to mark it with a piece of tape or a permanent marker or something like that. And I'm just gonna do that. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. And then you can see right there, there's a little white on the wire. I don't know if you can see it, but trust me, it's there. There's a little white on the wire, so I know that this side is the side that goes to the positive. So now, you've got your wire, you know, running past your, your scene or your prop that you want to light up. Now all you do is making sure that you've got the positive side connector on the positive side of the wire. You put it in there like that, and then you put the other one on. So see, now that one is, uh, is hooked up. And now let's say I need another light, oh, right about here. Put that on there, and that, and you squeeze it. And now we have two, and they're connected on that, on that wire. So, and you could connect, like I said, with these, with this configuration of LEDs and uh, this p power supply, I could do that for 22 lights along, you know, 10 feet of the speaker cable. The nice thing is if you need, let's say you decide you need to move one of these, well, you can just unplug it, pay attention to polarity. You can move it, you know, any place else on the wire. Let's say we want to put it right there and just snap it on and then bink, it's reconnected. So that's how you can run several LEDs off of one power supply, and this is a way to make it a little more convenient. Now, one word about using these connectors, they work great, but you don't want to plug it in and disconnect it too many times, because every time you do that, you're poking a hole in the insulation, and uh, you know you don't want to have holes in your insulation. That's what the insulation is there for. Also, I would say that if you do the same setup every year and you want to use the same wire every year, instead of disconnecting it here, leave the connectors on the cable, disconnect the LEDs or something from here, and that way you're not continually poking more holes in the wire. If you do a different setup every year but you want to use this technique, I would say use a fresh wire every year. The, the, the cable is cheap, you know, don't, don't cheap out on the cable, and that way you're using a fresh wire that doesn't have a bunch of holes poked in it from last year. So that is a little bit more about LEDs. I hope you found that useful. Um, please like and subscribe and especially subscribe. Subscriptions have been going very well on the channel and I'm grateful for that. Uh, and the subscriptions really do help, it, uh, help to make it so that I can make more of these videos. Um, the other thing is, if you have questions or suggestions, email me, get a hold of me on Instagram or uh, through Facebook comments. I do read everything that you send in. I can't always respond, but I try to. And I look forward to your comments and suggestions. And uh, again, please subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.